quite possibly the final procedure that you'll want to do once you have ozoned your audio is prepare it in such a way as make it ready for studio quality CD playback. To do this, you'll be advised to introduce dither into your track. When I use the word dither there, I mean use a set of dithering tools. Well, luckily, Ozone does contain exceptionally transparent dithering tools for conversion to different bit depths, and to do all this, utilizes Isotope's Mbit Plus dither. I'll quickly go through the settings with you here. You'll already know, I'm sure. Dithering isn't a process that you can hear. In fact, it has been designed, as you know, not to be heard. And that's where Ozone's dithering tools come into their own, being exceptionally transparent. Anyway, irrespective of whether you have a module running, you can add dither. I'll insert the dynamics module though, and then move over to the bottom right. Here, you see this dither button. When selected, we call open into focus this dither view. But at present, it's not running, it's in bypass. So power it up by clicking to the right there. Okay, good. Now we see all the tools available to us. And we start off by setting the bit depth. And we can set the bit depth here between 24 bit running down to 8 bit. Now I'm going to leave it at 16 bit CD quality for our example. And as you flick between the bit depth options, you'll see the very low noise dither trace in the view above in the response graph. And this displays the noise shaping profile curve as displayed across the frequency spectrum. Once done, we can choose how much dither noise we want to introduce between strong, medium, low and off. I'll put some information on your screen about this so that you can decide with your material which setting is most suitable. Just pause playback to read this. Okay, and so once you are done, notice also we can choose to limit peaks by activating here. Once more, I'll place this information on your screen about noise shaping peaks. Now I'll set it to medium and then move over to noise shaping. There are seven degrees of noise shaping from max at the extreme down to lowest and then off. And what we choose here sets how aggressively the noise spectrum is shaped. With it set, the generated dithered noise is pushed into frequency areas that are at a less audible range. To the right, we have a visual bit meter with a reset button below it. There is a considerable amount of textual information within the Ozone manual about how this bit meter operates. So I recommend having a look at the Ozone 6 manual for full information about this meter. But essentially, the meter is very useful when monitoring your audio's digital activity. And then over here at the far right of these tools is this DC offset meter that we can switch in or out below it there, filter DC offset. So if your audio waveform's average voltage is above or below zero, switch this to filter DC offset for best results. Again, the theory of DC offsetting is too complex for this Ozone 6 guide, so it's worth looking at Isotope's website for further resources. But when activated, when it's on, the DC offset meter will show the level or the DC in decibels that is getting removed. And that's it really. If you don't want to use dither, power it off. I say this because you don't want to accidentally apply dither if you know you might do even further processing outside of Ozone. Although why you feel you might do further processing outside of Ozone defeats me, seeing as Ozone 6 is the absolute perfect sonic mastering solution for when it has to be done right. Anyway, that's your call, and that's a quick look through this dithering section.